orchestral balancing is a delicate and fragile universe. It's a universe of subtlety. It's, uh, guys, guys, what's, what, what is that trumpet doing? One of the main problems we run into in programming is the issue of maintaining proper balance between instruments. This isn't only a programming issue, it's a real life thing that orchestrators, conductors and even orchestral musicians face and have to take into account when making music. So in this episode, we dedicate ourselves to the basics of orchestral balancing. Take for example a trumpet and a flute. In the real world, a trumpet is always louder than a flute playing at the same dynamic. All different instruments have different loudnesses and different possibilities and also different limits. To achieve the same volume, the instruments play different dynamics to each other. The trumpet plays at a softer dynamic, while the flute plays louder in order to achieve the same loudness. Balance isn't just about loudness though. Think about it like this. We know what the sizes of a bike and a house are. If the bike gets massive, we know something is wrong here. It's not realistic anymore. Now you might be thinking, I don't hear the flute. So why don't I just turn up the fader in the mix? Well, when you crank up the flute in the mix, you end up with a very unrealistic sound. You won't get the feeling of realism or of realistic balance. And what we're going for is a realistic sounding mock-up. So for this to work, we have to learn the realistic balance of instruments. Otherwise it ends up sounding wrong and weird for the listener. The term we're going to use to explain this is sonic perspective. With MIDI mock-ups, we're creating music with samples, and we want to end up with something that sounds real, with a realistic sonic perspective. One of the reasons we end up with an unrealistic sounding mock-up is because we're not paying attention to the relative loudness of our various instruments. Just think of it like our visual example with the house and the bike. It's the same with the trumpet and the flute. The trumpet is always louder than the flute, and the house is always bigger than the bike. So, if you want to have a trumpet and a flute playing at the same loudness, either the trumpet has to play pianissimo, or the flute has to play fortissimo. However, a flute playing fortissimo will completely disappear under a trumpet playing fortissimo. Thus, with orchestral balancing, we need to consider dynamics carefully. And it all becomes a little more complex when we're not only dealing with two individual instruments, but whole orchestral sections. Here are the three sections of the orchestra, strings, woodwinds, and brass. All the sections can play through different dynamics, for example strings playing from pianissimo to fortissimo. Also, the woodwinds are doing the same. If only one of the sections were playing, there's nothing to compare it to, and so nothing to worry about. But listening to both sections, it becomes obvious that the fortissimo of the strings is louder than the fortissimo of the woodwinds. Now comes another challenge, the brass. This section is even louder than the other two. Two or three trumpets could easily obliterate everyone else in the orchestra. Well, you might be thinking, why not just have more woodwinds if you want them to be louder? I suppose you could use a hundred flute players to balance out three trumpets. In theory, you could, and the flutes would be louder, but that's not what actually happens. The loudness or the amplitude of the sound would change, but not anywhere near as much as you'd think. And more importantly, the sound would change. So the orchestra would sound very different from the orchestral sound that we're used to. And unless you're going for some special effect, you're going to give the game away here. Not to mention the difficulty in getting a hundred flute players in to record. And imagine if we applied this thinking across the whole orchestra. Then the orchestra would need to be a thousand players. You can see there's probably a good reason this hasn't happened. To get back on track, what we're going for is the established sound of a symphony orchestra in classical music and in film and media music. We all know what that orchestra sounds like. The sound is formed by the sections we've talked about, and the sound of those sections is determined by the amount of players. Here's a typical example of a traditional symphony orchestra. 
The string section might have 60 or more players. For example, 16 first violins, 14 second violins, 12 violas, 10 celli, and eight double basses. In the woodwinds, we usually find three flutes, three oboes, three clarinets, and three bassoons. And one player from each of the woodwind groups might be doubling on an auxiliary instrument, such as a piccolo flute, a cor anglais, a bass clarinet, or a contrabassoon. And the brass is typically formed of four French horns, two trumpets, two trombones, one bass trombone, and one tuba. So this is what we're working with, and the sound that we're trying to recreate in our mock-ups. And we want to get a realistic sounding balance. Let's explore some of this in a practical way. We can use the Berlin Orchestra created with Berkeley. These patches and samples are pre-balanced and mixed into one stereo mix for each patch in a balanced traditional orchestral sonic perspective. Here we have a flute melody that I've written earlier. The melody is playing around mezzo forte, loudish but not too loud, and I've written a simple string part to go around it. Now to get a good balance here where the flute can be the focus, I want the strings to play softly. This works nicely, but say I'd program this in with the mod wheel up. It would sound great when I played it, but then we'd quickly hear that we have an unrealistic balance. Now I might have just turned the flute up, or I might have turned the strings down to hear the flute. But then the dynamics would be weird, and we'd end up with something that sounds unrealistic. To hear what this sounds like, let's go to each region and select all of my mod data and just pull it up as if I'd played it in with the mod wheel up, like this. Then I'm going to play this example. To program dynamics, we can use MIDI continuous controllers otherwise known as CCs. The ones that are important are CC1 for dynamics and CC7 for volume. But do not mess with the volume. Do not touch CC7. The volumes are already perfectly adjusted to what a real orchestra would sound like. The balance here is in our samples and in the way that they've been recorded and mixed. Carrying on, let's add some brass into the arrangement, maybe around mezzo forte. Let's have a listen to that. As we've already seen, the brass is louder than the woodwinds and the strings. So this sort of messes up our idea of the fairly soft flute and piano strings. To balance everything, the strings would have to play mezzo forte to forte, and the flute would have to play either forte or fortissimo, or maybe not at all. Adding the brass means the context of this music has changed, and maybe the flutes aren't really needed. The one flute would sound like it's straining if we just make it play the melody in fortissimo. If the part has melodic or harmonic content that we need, and I think we do, why don't we just choose another instrument or section to play this bit of the music? Staying with the woodwinds, the clarinets are a bit louder in the middle register, the oboes will cut through a bit more in the alto or the soprano registers, so let's use the oboes. Give me a minute. This is the same example, now with brass, but the strings are playing louder and a flute part is cutting through on an oboe instead. everything sounding nice and balanced and realistic just by choosing the appropriate dynamics 
and being aware of orchestral balance. The point we're making isn't that the samples are bad. We know the samples sound great. They're recorded in situ, that means sat as the orchestra would be seated, with the same relative gain settings during recording. And they're pre-balanced between the different sections, so that the dynamics are expressed at realistic relative volumes. Our challenge is that we have to put that back together from scratch in the computer, usually one thing at a time, and so we need to be aware of all of this stuff. You might be wondering why I mentioned the MIDI volume controller CC7 at all earlier, or you might be wondering why we're not doing any balancing with the volume faders in the mixer. If the library is recorded at the perfect relative volume, then why do we need CC7 or CC11 or a volume fader at all? Really what this is about is balancing the volume of instruments dynamically first. There will be times where you might want to push a flute melody up or feature the strings a bit more, and of course we have that control, and that's all par for the course when we're mixing film music. But these are small changes, not big ones. And if your balance is already good in your programming, then you just need little things to help out. Little fades or balance changes here or there, maybe CC11 to put the expression back in while retaining the correct dynamics in the music. And we have a video on CC11 all by itself. So, we've basically gone through everything here. Almost. I'll just destroy one more misconception that's out there. And that's the idea that plugins are going to solve your problems. It's just not true. The earth is not flat, Bigfoot isn't real, and plugins are not going to solve your dodgy programming. If your mock-up isn't programmed right and isn't sounding realistic, then plugins won't make it sound any better. They'll actually make it sound worse. You'll just be turning up and shining a spotlight onto any mistakes and any unrealistic programming. Well, that about wraps us up, but I think we need just one more trumpet part in this music. <laughs> 